Good evening. This is Andrew Sheets with the Third Heaven Traveler blog. The Third Heaven Traveler blog is about our spiritual life in Jesus Christ and Him in us, who believe on Him and how we apply this existence in our daily lives here in this realm. The Gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. I pray eyes could be opened with this teaching. To you be the honor and glory forever. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha. This is a perfect case study of preaching another Jesus, preaching another gospel. The gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, King James Bible. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, if ye keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Paul also writes in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And then the same thing is repeated in the next verse, in Galatians verse 9, chapter 1. Paul writes, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that we ye have received, let him be accursed. Paul also writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel which you've not accepted, ye might well bear with him. You see, Paul's mocking those Corinthians that were carnal, that were continually running after one false doctrine to another. Background. Doctrine matters. Which King James Bible version would I recommend? Please read that. I have detailed links in there about the King James Bible and its history. You've got to be solid in that. It is written in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, this is where it ends. This is the only thing people can remember, and they think that's where it ends. But no, the scripture in John chapter 3 continues. For he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. My first case study that I want to bring here 
is adding works unto the gospel of grace. This is a reprobate in the faith telling us that the gospel of Paul is in his own vain imagination. And how many times have we heard this? This individual, I have it here, he sent me this comment on the video about another gospel when I was teaching on the social gospel of today. And this is shocking because he says, I'm in my mid-60s. The word gospel also means the truth. Okay, now he's making this up because that's not what the gospel is. The gospel literally means the good news, which is salvation. But see, in his own vain imagination, in his carnal mind, which is enmity against God, he's going to tell us what the gospel is in addition to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. So he continues, the good, the bad, the ugly truth. He says, we don't feed our children just cake and ice cream that will kill them. They have to have meat and potatoes and vegetables too, spiritually speaking. As a new babe born, we desire the sincere milk of the word. But at some point in that spiritual walk, you have to feed them the meat of the word and give them the new wine. I cannot find in the word of God where Jesus or the disciples only preach the good. They preach the good, the bad, and the ugly. Therefore, leaving the principle of the doctrine of Christ, Hebrews 6.1, therefore, the, I, I'm stunned he used this, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go into the perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. This will we do if God permit. My response to this individual, I write, I hope I'm not misunderstanding you. I was trying to be polite, but I got him clearly. But it seems you're saying that the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, King James Bible, must be added with works. This is another gospel. I pray you realize what you're saying. You're of the same spirit of the Judaizers that crept into the church. Do you understand precisely what Paul is saying here in Hebrews chapter 6? Paul's not adding these requirements onto the gospel. Note, I did not go into detail here about Hebrews 6. But not only was Paul not addressing the gospel and not even saying we need to practice these things, but rather it's time to move on from these things uh, that are caught up with works in the law. And I have my study here. I urge you to read it about study the shock and awe of Hebrews. The shock and awe of Paul in the book of Hebrews. Uh, he made some other comments and so then I responded, unless I'm misunderstanding your comment, it appears you are walking up to a 16-inch gun barrel on a battleship, placing your head inside the muzzle and yelling, fire. Galatians chapter 1, 8 is repeated by verse 9, King James Bible, and this is very serious. Note, I was not misunderstanding this man. He kept doubling down on works into salvation, trying to say even that the great white throne judgment was to judge the works of mankind. That includes this man was so lost, so confounded that he even had, he thinks that the great white throne judgment is all of humanity, including the church. Uh, he has no concept about the beam seed or anything like that, but so I asked for clarification a couple times because I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt. But sadly, it went from bad to worse, and I had to block him. Case number two. Two young influencers are telling us that Jesus washes the feet and is accepting of every person in any and every walk of life. 
I urge you, check this video out. It's a YouTube short. And in there, these two girls are have it in there. And this is a very popular uh, YouTube short. The, I've seen it in a couple of different places. But the, the thing is, it shows Jesus kowtowing, bowing down, and washing the feet of every criminal, the Pope, Joe Biden, Trump. I mean, you can't make this up. Some terrorist, he said, I've killed many people. And Jesus is like, I've got your, I, I, I'm here for you. I mean, today's apostate, seeker-friendly, ecumenical, love bunny Jesus, this is not biblical. Read John chapter 3 again. Those who are not of Je- belong, that do not belong to Jesus Christ are condemned. Now, the condemned are not going to be loved on and have their feet washed by Jesus Christ. How clear or clearer can I possibly make this? Here's the YouTube short link. I urge you to check it out. In Revelation chapter 616, does this sound like a seeker-friendly love hug bunny Jesus washing the feet of terrorists that kill people and washing the feet of the Pope? And Jesus said, or in Revelation 6.16, and said, these are the people that are left behind in the tribulation, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Does that sound the wrath of the Lamb? That's Jesus Christ. And by the way, a quick grammar lesson here. The comma and the conjunction and is not a cumulative function of this uh, conjunction. This is called a copulative function of this conjunction and. It means the one that sits on the throne, that's Jesus Christ. And he's represented, that's him. He is the lamb and his wrath is being poured out on the earth. In Revelation chapter 20, 11 through 13, it is written, And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it. This is Jesus Christ. And whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great, stand before God, this is Jesus Christ, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man, according to their works." Does this sound like a hug, snuggle, love bunny who was washing the feet of criminals of the Pope? Trust me, Jesus Christ would not be washing the Pope's feet. Universalists, they always forget scriptures about hell and the lake of fire. See, Jesus talked more about hell than he did heaven. There's this reprobate from hell, Rodney Bellow of Grace Bible Church. Now, I did this study And I rebuke him for his ecumenism and his universalism. And listen, I've had several of his zombie followers, mostly foolish women, silly women, and saying, no, a loving God would never cast someone into the eternal lake of fire. It just wouldn't happen. Okay, well, that's their vain imagination. And also understand that the saying, the expression that God loves the sinner, that's not biblical. Now, let me say this. I got a lot of comments when I did that video in this blog. This is the person who lives in habitual sin and is not, does not belong to God, but it's a fake. Newsflash. Talking about Jesus going around washing the feet feet of the sinners. Do you know here, newsflash, that Jesus did not wash Judas's feet? Yes, he washed his true disciples' feet, his true followers. 
Now let that sink in. But he did not wash Judas' feet. Now the apostate Laodicean church of today, along with their fellow YouTube wolves and so-called Bible scholars with their perverted Bible translations, they teach that Jesus washed Judas of Iscariot's feet. Check it out. But I want you, and I have the scriptures of the Gospels of the Last Supper in Matthew. It's in the comments, uh, notes below. I have Luke, Mark, Luke, and John. And I want you to study that out for yourself. But I've studied it in depth. I've had brothers and sisters in Christ who are solid Bible students study it. No, Jesus did not wash Judas's feet. So why would he don't think he's going to wash all these reprobates, their feet? See, after the Passover meal is when he washed the feet, but Jesus had already told Judas to go do what he had to do, and Judas departed immediately. Another news flash. See, Judas participated in the meal. Yes, he did, the Passover meal. And at least one or two of the cups but he departed before the final cup. Guess what that is? That's what we celebrate in communion today. The cup for the remission of sins. Judas did not get that cup. Do your homework. I have. Research that. I have. And brothers and sisters who are solid Bible students have done it. Study this for yourself. Although the four... All four Gospels discuss the Last Supper. It's only John and Luke that are more detailed than the timeline of events. The, now, I want to talk about the sop in Scripture when Jesus Christ said that the he would dip. Well, let's go down here and read in John. And let's see. Go down for the looking at the last, it says, And Jesus answered and said, To whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do it quickly. So that sop literally means a dip of taking, in this context, bread that's been dipped in wine. Now, many scholars, and I believe this is true, we believe that this symbolized the betrayal of Joseph by his brothers when afterward they dipped his coat of many colors in goat blood. Think of goat, the betrayal. There's also a connection here of Jesus symbolizing the dipping of the hyssop in the land's blood during Passover. Now, notice, he ate that, but he did not drink the final cup offering, which is for the remission of sins, to, to stand righteous before God. He basically is saying, you're going to eat the Passover lamb without the blood, taking it in the communion, which we call the, the uh, taking the Passover meal. Now, typically, the Passover meal, there was at least four cups, where the final cup is for the remission of sins. Here are the scriptures. Uh, you can, I urge you, get your King James Bible, read these scriptures for yourself. But in John, go to John chapter 13. Read it carefully. Luke, Luke chapter 22, 7 through 38. And then go to Matthew 26, 26 through 29. And then Matthew, correction, Mark chapter 14, uh, verses 18 through 26. Dear Lord, I pray you come soon, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha. <laughs>